uh, we just said Christianity is dangerous, and you so eloquently on a previous program some time ago pointed out that uh, the, the, the Jesus of Islam makes no sense. That's correct. And, and I would like you to elaborate on that. I mean, isn't it true, and I'll let you uh, elaborate on this, isn't it true that in Islam, Jesus basically just came and said, well, believe in God, believe in the Torah, and that was basically it. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's the case, Christianity would not be dangerous at all. The Jews would not have been upset with Jesus or anything else. Can you elaborate a bit on that? Yes, if we, I mean, if, if you think about it, according, even according to Islam, the Jews wanted to kill Jesus. This is according to Islam. They don't believe, you don't believe that uh, the Jews did kill Jesus, but you believe that the Jews were boasting that they had killed Jesus. Well, what does this presuppose? This presupposes that, that they wanted to kill him. But if you look at the Muslim version of events, what did Jesus do? He came to the, he came to the Jews and said, I confirm the Torah. I confirm <laughs> this. This is the word of God, this Torah right here, and you need to follow the Torah. Yeah. Would the Pharisees... <laughs> Would the Pharisees have been upset with this? They would have said, amen, amen, yeah. what a great man, what a great man telling the people to observe the Torah. Exactly. That's what they would have said. So my question for you, my Muslim friends, uh, why would people get upset? I mean, this, this is like, imagine someone coming to me and Pastor Joseph and saying, believe in the New Testament. <laughs> Would we, would we go into a rage? Would we say, we have to kill this man? We have to murder him? Of course not. So you have a massive problem in Islam. Uh, namely, you're teaching that the Jews were so upset with Jesus that they wanted him dead and they believed they put him to death. Mm. And two, that Jesus was just a good Jew who came along telling people to believe in the Torah. How do you reconcile these? Well, Pastor Joseph, it gets, it gets much, much, much worse mm. than this when we mm. go into the details yeah. of, uh, of the Jesus of the Quran versus the Jesus of history. We know, we know. Yeah. That, uh, that Jesus, by the end of his life, people wanted to kill him. So what did he do? He must have done something. We know according to the Quran, mm -hmm. uh, Allah told Jesus that his followers would be superior until the day of resurrection. They'd be superior to the unbelievers until mm -hmm. the day of resurrection. Mm -hmm. But wait, based on what Muslims tell me today, mm -hmm. The unbelievers came in and conquered the disciples. The original message of Jesus was lost, and a corrupt version took over. But wait a minute. Uh, didn't Allah know this? Wouldn't Allah know that Christianity is going to be immediately corrupted? It seems he would have to if he's, if he's God. So now you're stuck with a problem. Uh, you can either say that Allah knows everything. If Allah knows everything, then why would he tell Jesus that his followers are going to be victorious until the day of resurrection? Uh, was he lying to Jesus? Why would Allah lie to Jesus? I know that according to Islam, Allah is the greatest of deceivers, but yeah. do you even apply that to the prophets? Mm. Like God lies to the prophets? You, trust me, Jesus, your followers are going to be victorious until mm. the day of resurrection. Mm. But actually, Allah knows that they're going to crumble as soon as the Apostle Paul comes along. Mm. But the problems get even bigger than this, Pastor Joseph, because in Islam, you can't put, every, you can't put all the blame for the corruption of Christianity on the Apostle Paul. Mm. Part of the blame for the corruption of Christianity is on Allah, mm. who tricked the people yeah. <laughs> into believing that Jesus died by crucifixion. The whole religion Allah, of Christianity. Yes, Allah <laughs> tricked them according to Islam. According to Islam, Allah tricked people into believing that Jesus died on the cross for sins. Why do I believe that Jesus died on the cross? Why does Pastor Joseph believe that Jesus died on the cross? Why do billions of people believe that Jesus died on the cross? According to Islam, it's because God deceived us. Mm, mm, mm. Why would Allah do that? Wait a minute. Allah, Allah does not love the unbelievers. Right. Allah does not love the unbelievers, remember. So do you see why Allah would trick and deceive us? But the problems get worse, Pastor Joseph. Mm. Because Allah didn't just deceive the unbelievers, people who rebelled against Jesus. Mm. Even Jesus' apostles, his disciples, came to believe that he died on the cross for their sins. We know. Mm. They went to their deaths proclaiming Jesus' death and resurrection. Where did, they, where did they get belief? Where did they come by their belief that Jesus died on the cross for sins? Allah tricked even them. So in Islam, you have uh, Jesus' disciples submitting to Allah as disciples. That's what the Quran says. The, the disciples said, we are followers of Allah. We are Muslims. We bear that witness that we are Muslims. Mm. So they become Muslims, and then Allah even deceives them. 
Mm. So now Allah just isn't just tricking unbelievers, he's tricking believers and leading mm. them astray and leading them into a corrupt religion. But things get even worse, Pastor mm. Joseph, because Allah promised that he would guard Jesus' followers to the day of resurrection. We saw that, and that his message would be uppermost. Some of the party of the Jews believed, and some disbelieved. And according to the Quran, Allah aided those who believed until they became uppermost over the Jews. But wait a minute. When did Jesus' followers become uppermost, become more powerful than the Jews? There is nothing in history you can point to with Christians becoming uppermost, more powerful than the Jews, until Christianity took over the Roman Empire. But wait a minute, these Christians were proclaiming Jesus' death, resurrection, and deity. So now you have not only Allah starting a false religion by convincing everyone that Jesus died by crucifixion, now he actively engages in aiding and helping people who are proclaiming shirk, proclaiming the deity of Christ, and he helps them become uppermost of the Jews. But why? Why would Allah help people who emphasize and advocate shirk? Mm. Why would he help them take over the most powerful empire in the world? Mm. And why would he help them uh, become more powerful than Judaism? Why would he do that? Think about this. Why do Pastor Joseph and I believe in Christianity today, according to Islam, according to the Quran? We believe because Allah helped start Christianity by tricking and deceiving people into thinking that Jesus died on the cross. And then once Christianity had been fully corrupted and people were proclaiming Jesus' death, resurrection, and deity, his divine nature, then Allah helped people who preached that message until they became dominant. So we believe in Christianity today because of Allah. And because Allah has tricked and deceived us, he now has no love for us. Mm. Do, you, do you see what kind of problems you have with, with, uh, with the Muslim method? Amen. Islam portrays Jesus as a horrible, incompetent failure. And once again, every Muslim, no, that's not. We honor Jesus. We show Jesus respect and reverence. No, you don't. No, you don't. And I'm not just talking about you denying his deity. That's not, what I, that's not even what I'm referring to now. Of course, you deny his deity. So regardless of how you portray him, if you portray him as a mere human being, you are massively insulting him. You are blaspheming him. And you ultimately have to stand before him, according to his words, not according to ours. Jesus said he is the final judge. Mm -hmm. So I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about your real picture of Jesus. You claim to have this respect for Jesus. You claim to have this special reverence for Jesus as one of God's greatest prophets. And yet when you dig a little deeper, you find that Islam massively insults him, not just, but not just by denying his deity. Uh, but by portraying him as a miserable failure. So let me ask you, Muslims, uh, since you believe that Jesus is this uh, highly exalted figure in Islam, what did Jesus ultimately accomplish according to Islam? Hmm. Yeah, what did he? Exactly. Nothing. What did he do? Tell me something he did that lasted, that he got done, that made the world a better place. You see... When you think that Jesus is exalted, you're thinking, oh, uh, he was born of a virgin. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great sign. Oh, he, uh, he spoke shortly after birth. Uh, oh, he performed all of these miracles. Oh, Allah took him to heaven and wouldn't allow him to be killed. All of those things, yeah. Um, what did Jesus do that lasted or made a difference? Because according to what Muslims tell me, after Jesus was taken away, his message was corrupted. His followers fell away. They fell away so quickly, we don't even have any record that Jesus had Muslim followers. There's no record anywhere in history. We had to wait till Muhammad to come along and say, oh, yeah, he had uh, Muslim followers. You have no record of their existence. Um, so Jesus, after all that work, after being given all these miracles, doesn't get anything done. It was all wasted. It was a big waste. After Jesus, after Jesus is taken away, there are only two kinds of people. There are people who are bowing down to him and worshiping him as Lord. They're going to hell for shirk, according to Islam. And there are people who rejected him. They're going to hell, according to Islam, for rejecting one of God's prophets. So, so at the end of all of Jesus' work, everyone's going to hell. That's one of God's greatest messengers, a guy who doesn't do anything. He chose his followers. They all got corrupted somehow. He didn't do anything that lasted. After all of that, after the most miraculous life, ever. 
nothing lasted. And you're telling me you respect Jesus when that's how you portray him as this incompetent guy who spends all these years doing this and just doesn't get the job done. And so that's why we need Muhammad, because he comes along later and he gets the job done, right? He gets things done. Jesus couldn't make it work. You see, you don't think, you don't think about these things. You, don't look, you just believe what, you're, what you hear and, oh, we respect Jesus, and you never think about the actual implications of what you believe. But here, as we've seen over and over again over this five-part series, Islam sounds good in certain ways on the surface, but every time you dig a little deeper, you find either falsehood or you find uh, blasphemy, insults against the one true God. The Muslims actually believe a lot about Jesus Christ. They believe that he was born of a virgin, he is called the Word of God, he was uh, sinless, he performed miracles, and even in their eschatology, he is coming in, in the future, he's returning in the future. Well, one can contrast that with the life of Muhammad. Muhammad was a sinner who asked for forgiveness, he never claimed to perform miracles, and he's dead and buried in, in, the, in, in Saudi Arabia today. You can go to his grave. Even in Islamic eschatology, it's not Muhammad who is coming back in their eschatology. And so I, that's a good question, a good contrast to make for, for Muslims and a good question to ask him. Why is Jesus unique? None of these things are afforded to any of the prophets, including Muhammad. Why does Jesus have these unique things that happen to him alone exclusively? Muhammad was not born of a virgin. That's a good question to ask them. Amen.